This video is part of a larger series on a project for the Element 14 community, the electronics and engineering community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now on element14.com, link in the doobly doo. So if you are interested in science fiction, these ridiculous questions with meanings. Greetings programs, Atari here, you there, and if you are interested in little hackery electronics type projects that you can do while you are holed up in some kind of a quarantine, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And tally-ho! This is an original Mego 2XL uh, educational robot toy quiz thingy. Uh, it was made in the late, great 1978 by the Mego Corporation, also famous for doing, like, Micronauts. Basically, what you have here is a, a little 8-track player and four track select buttons that correspond with uh, what is on one of these little gems. You would put that in his belly, it would, uh, it would go into the player, and it would play... Um, each track corresponding with a question or a correct or incorrect answer, and it would, you know, play through, and you would have, like, a little interactive quiz game. Now, this was, like, one of the early... This is the granddaddy of interactive toys. It's very interesting. holds a very special place in my heart uh, because it was fun and silly, and I literally thought that these were <laughs> video game cartridges back in the day. Um... Uh, because, you know, this was just at the cusp of where I was coming along. And they look very similar to, like, an Atari cart or something of that same era. But it is an 8-track, and you would pop it right in there. And we're going to tear this guy down, see what's inside, see how he works. And uh, going to be using that as the basis of this Project Mego, uh, which is to turn him into a proper robot assistant. So, without further ado, let's perform a little surgery. So, that is power switch and volume control. This is the um, power input. It's a three and a half millimeter jack. Um, and then on the back, looks like we have a speaker grill. Now, this one came from a local thrift store. Uh, so it is a little dirty, and it's still got the price tag on there. 1978 Mego Corporation, made in Taiwan, covered by U.S. and other foreign patents pending. And the patent number, should be able to look that up and put that in the uh, doobly-doo for you. One thing I do love about old vintage, particularly 70s and 80s electronics, and, and really even going earlier than that, is it's all generally, everything's held together with screws, one, like big screws, and for two, everything is really like, it's big. Everything's really big, and you can see it. Micro-miniaturization had not really taken hold yet because it wasn't, you know, the technology just wasn't there. They had miniaturization, transistorization, uh, but micro-miniaturization really wasn't uh, as big a thing yet. I would be very surprised if there is a lot of integrated circuitry in this thing at all. The only thing I could think of that would be like integrated circuitry would be uh, maybe, maybe an op amp, maybe a 7 series op amp. There's all our screws. Okay, so there we are inside. So we got a big old speaker driver here, and I love this uh, this wire bundling here. This is this is a twist tie. It's just a twist tie. That's amazing. All of it. It's all twist ties. That's crazy. That's so funny. That's that's funny. Uh, let's see. And this is the eight track mechanism here. This would be the switching board. I do see an IC on there. And then it looks like we've got some LEDs up here, and that's really it. And then the, the switch and potentiometer there. Okay, let's do... Let's start. Let's just take this guy. Let's start taking these, these wire bundles apart. Um, 
take this out too. There is. There's the speaker. It's a eight ohm fa half watt. So if I take the face off. So you look in here, the face is actually screwed on with these four screws right here. Uh, the problem is this hole where the, uh, where the wires and everything goes through, it's just, it's too small for the uh, faceplate to come back through this way, which means I would have to uh, desolder or cut the wires to all of these uh, LEDs. So I don't want to do that yet. And of course, the eye sockets are all uh, just plastic well, and you know, hit it with a soldering iron kind of thing. So I don't want to take that out yet. I'm going to have to at some point. Uh, right here. Oh, that, this guy just pops off. The whole cap pops out. That's right there. And uh, there is a nut. There is a retaining nut. Too big. It's a little too big. Dang, if I'm going to get in there, I have to improvise. It's so grody, too. Like, there's like 40 years of dust and gunk and crap on here. Okay, there's that. Just a couple of screws holding this board in. Biggest concern is not destroying the plastic, the screw holes that are in there. I don't have my um, my little spring clip puller, so I'm trying to see what I can do with this. I also don't have WD-40 here, so I may not be able to loosen this right away. Well, I loosened something. I'm going to end up replacing this part too because this is where the power comes in and I don't want, when I actually put this thing together, I don't want the power to come in from the front because it just kind of looks dumb. Um, so I'm going to route power in from somewhere else. But I'm going to use this port, not for headphones, I'm going to use it for something else novel. All right. Oh, there it goes. Now it's moving. Moving, it's moving. Yes, I am invincible. Also, looks like it's aluminum because it's not magnetic. Same with that washer; it's not really sticking to my magnet there. Okay, there's that. And then this guy should just slide right out. Okay, now that is. Guts of a 2XL. Right there, in the flesh. Uh, what do we got on here? That's a uh, LM386N. Let's see what that is. And this is just a control board. Essentially, um, you would push a button on here, and I would assume this guy probably determines which of the heads. So you should have um, eight stereo tracks running across here. And um, the recording, the playback head, I should say, it's not a recording head because it doesn't record. Um, although I guess you could turn it into one. That's, that's another show on another day. Um, <clears throat> so you can see it goes right up against there. Holds it tight up against that. Okay, so I I ended up deciding to just take the faceplate off, and I just I just broke the connections. The plastic was already really brittle anyway, and I can just glue it back, so not a really big deal. So here is the whole thing kind of naked. Uh, the control board here. This was interesting too. I noticed. I was wondering how the buttons actually change, and I noticed that there is actually a little piece of this, uh, this aluminum here on the side. And when the button goes in, it actually locks against this piece of aluminum. And when another one comes out, there's apparently 
a little wedge that pushes it off to the side and it just kind of slips out. So that's a neat little thing. This is also, this is a, just an audio amplifier. So that's all that's going on with the chip here. So this whole thing is analog. Um, it's very interesting though, because uh, if we look at it a little bit further, so we have, this is our power and volume switch. So when the tape goes in like this, this, I do believe, is our power switch. That actually gets the whole thing started. Big old motor here, and it's a belt drive to this pinch roller. That's right here. And then the head. Now, the problem is that this head, the little, the little bracket that holds the head in place, is cracked. It is broken. So I've noticed that... Uh, we have a problem with track alignment. If I push B, it registers as A. If I push A, it registers as the question button. If I push the question button, it doesn't register at all. So uh, that's a problem. And if I were a different Matt on YouTube, I'd say, oh dear, that's too bad. I'll have to replace that. Uh, and I may be able to uh, secure another one of these. I'm, I actually have another 2XL that I may just pull parts from and I may get one working 2XL out of this. But um, I don't have the original power adapter, but it does run on nine volts and uh, 300 milliamps. And so we can just turn that on there. And if we push the tape in, now you can hear, you can hear multiple tracks at the same time. It's really annoying. But well, the mechanism's kind of neat. So we're sh we should have question pushed in. Uh-oh. Oh, oh it was, it's grounding. There we go. So we have the question button pushed. And what happens when you change... When you change the buttons, when you push a different button, it actually sends a signal over here to this guy that is supposed to engage and then change the track. This little mechanism here changes the position of the playhead to different tracks. All right, so yeah, so it's a pretty bog standard uh, eight track player here. Uh, I don't want to get too far into this. I'm more interested in the wiring and how everything kind of comes together. So you push a button and it selects a different track. Looks like a lot of signal conditioning. These are these are some kind of transistors. I'm not sure what kind of 1402 transistors. And then that leads down here to this guy, which is actually the head select. And it looks like these four wires would actually control. Yes, these four wires can tr go to each button to tell it which uh, which one to play. So there it is. This is a uh, torn down 2XL. It's the uh, it's the guts of the thing. Here's your power input. Here's the LED output. This is just the control board brain box essentially to a bog standard uh, eight track mechanism and a speaker. And that's really it. I'm going to be working a little bit more with this thing in another video, so go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss that. Over here, connect with me on Twitter at Airborne Surfer and see pictures of projects in 
progress and so much more on my Instagram at the Airborne Surfer. Here is a video that YouTube thinks you will probably enjoy and down here somewhere are the show notes for this episode. My name is Atari and until next time remember it's okay it's just a prototype. Tally ho y'all.